This week, we're off to Kenya and Karagato AB washed. My name is Steve Layton, and I travel the world finding amazing and delicious coffee for you to drink at home. Some make coffee difficult to understand and complicated, but here, it's my job to make it easy and fun and tell you what's in my mug. So, Kenya Karagato. Um, it's Kenya Karagato, but it's uh, AB. And I want to talk a little bit about what AB is. So, in Kenya, there are AAs, ABs, Cs, and I can't remember what they're called naturals, but there's something else. It's boonie, I think. Um, but AB is basically the screen size of the coffee seed. So, when the dry coffee is dry milled, it goes through like a, a sieving process. And anything uh, great size 16 or above, which is the screen size, I'm not going to explain the screen size, is an AA. And anything below that is um, an AB. Now, quite often this is referred to as the poorer cousin of AA. But what I found is sometimes ABs taste better than AAs. And sometimes AAs taste better than ABs. It's not necessarily... Um, a sign of them. But what it also does, it gives you a different cup profile. So if you cup the AA and the AB alongside, you can choose which one is the better one. And for me, the AB is the better one from Caragotto. Um, Caragotto is based in Nieri County, um, very near to the town of uh, Caratina. Um, um, the mill is called Caragotto and it's owned by a co-op. So lots of people um, deliver it there. The co-op is called uh, tan, tangu, uh, tekan, tekanagu, sorry, um, a cooperative society, and it has over 1,700 members. Um, the altitude of the mill is around about 1,700 metres above sea level. And why am I telling you the altitude of the mill? Well, the majority of the farms are based around that mill, so that gives you an idea of the average uh, altitude um, around the farm. Um, the majority of the varietals in that area, and by, when I say majority, it really is a majority. It's not necessarily um, an, an exact, but it's probably 90, 95% of the coffees are SL28 and SL34. Um, things we know about the region, well, the average rainfall is around about 15, uh, 1,500 millimetres a year. Uh, the average temperature ranges go from 12 to 27 degrees C. Uh, 12 at night uh, in the coldest times, 27 degrees, tends to be the warmest it gets there because of that altitude. Um, an amazingly well-run mill, um, a coffee that's been used by a lot of roasters over the years uh, and still is, um, and coffee that we're super proud um, that we're able to stock. Um, I think it's time for us to go stick our snozzers in bowls. So this is a little bit of a treat. Um, Snozzer in the bowl on Karagato, well, on any Kenyan, is amazing. Kenyans are unique just because of that process, um, the underwater fermentation, um, and the, the varietals that they have. The SL28, the SL34s are just like, they are the aromatic uh, coffees of there. So let's get the Nozzer in. Now, Aromatics are not always linked to the flavours that you're going to taste. It can give you an idea of what's going to come, but quite often you smell things that aren't necessarily in the cup. Um, on this one, I'm smelling like an orange skin, so like the, you know, the zest of an orange. It's very sweet, and it smells a little bit whiny, um, but kind of like, almost like a spiced kind of mulled wine type things. Like, if you have some of this at home, like, go grind a little bit. Grind it nice and coarse like this, because that will give you lots of the, the, the aromatics off there and just smelling coffee is awesome. So it was fun smelling the coffee, but we're going to talk a little bit about how coffee grows. And the reason I want to talk about that was when I was visiting Caragotto a couple of years ago now, um, they allowed me to plant a tree um, and with my name and everything on it. And I'm going to show you the picture on the screen of that now. Um, going to talk about a little bit how they kind of get it to the point that it's a tree that they can plant. So what you'll do is you, if you get the seed of the coffee cherry uh, while it's in parchment, you put it into some water and it'll start to germinate. When it starts to germinate, you plant it. And around about two, three weeks after that planting, the seed will start to come through. But they're called soldiers. So as the, the plant comes up, the seed still sticks to the top until the leaves kind of punch it out. 
Um, showing you a picture now on the screen of uh, a coffee seedling I have at home from stolen seeds from Bolivia. Um, but yeah, from there, the seedling will grow in a nursery for around about six to eight months. And then they'll take the seedling and then plant it actually on the farms. Unfortunately, a lot of those seedlings won't make it to plants, so they always have a few extras in the nursery to be able to uh, replace ones that don't quite take and things. Um, it's an amazing thing that nature does, and uh, it's such a beautiful thing to see on the farm. So this is the business end. He's actually tasting a Kenyan coffee. So let's pour it into my brand new mug. Roland went on holiday, rose to Roland, and bought me a cup back from Toledo. I haven't had anybody buy me a mug for years. It was lovely. Very nice. Thank you, Roland. Right, so um, let's dive in. So the front of this coffee is just pure orange marmalade. It's got the texture of it. You can feel it. Uh, the orange acidity is there. It's got a really good brown sugar sweetness to it. It's almost like a golden syrup kind of sweetness. But the thing I love more than anything is it's got that classic black currant finish. Um, Kenyas are very, very typical for black currant finishes. And um, this is just phenomenal. Um, it's so sad when the Kenyans run out and we have to wait for the new ones to arrive. But it makes you appreciate them even more when they do come back. And I really do appreciate this one. Um, hope you enjoy it too. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. And do remember, life is too short for bad coffee.